Join us as we camp and explore around Cuyahoga National Park. It's spring 2024 and Kate, Coco and I are headed out on a road trip to see some national parks. This is our first time staying in the truck camper for more than 10 days at a time and we're really looking forward to living on the road. Our last trip out west was to Colorado in 2023 and I'm guessing we'll have even more fun this time. May 1st, 2024, are you ready? I'm ready, are you? This is gonna be the biggest road trip you've ever been on. Two whole months. We've got traction boards, 10 gallons of water, lots of different sneakers and shoes. We made sure we have batteries for the dual car. The only thing we really didn't do was fill up our propane tanks. I think one of them's completely empty, but I'm sure we'll find a space to do that along the way. Just past Syracuse, New York, and we want to do about four more hours of driving tonight. We plan on staying at a Cracker Barrel in Ohio, and I will check in with you later or once we get there. It is 9.30, and we have about 45 more minutes to where we're staying tonight, and we just crossed into Ohio. It's 10.30, and we're just pulling up to the Cracker Barrel. I think we left at about 2.40 p.m., and we're in Willoughby, Ohio now. Coco, how is it to be back at a Cracker Barrel? We're over here on the side and there's one other van here and they're parked in the back, but I didn't want to take the spot next to the dumpsters in case they empty those at night because we experienced that last time we stayed at a Cracker Barrel. Well, we just had a very late dinner. Kate's reading and Coco's on the couch. I'm about to brush my teeth, but that's it for today and we'll see you in the morning. It's a beautiful day out already. Coco and I just got out to go on a little walk and it's a lot sunnier out than I expected. You really can't see the, any part of sunlight when you're in the truck camper with all the blinds closed. Now we're headed to a Starbucks that is 16 minutes south of here. And later today, we'll be visiting Cuyahoga National Park. There's also a Trader Joe's at that end of the lot. Maybe we'll have to stop there and get a few things before we head out later. Coco and I are all set up in here got my laptop up and I've got the fan on and both windows open. I'm holding on to Coco's leash. I wish I had like a good place to like connect this to so she could just go far enough to not jump off the tailgate. I tried connecting it here but that was too short so I'll have to figure that out because that would be really nice. It's really nice leaving that door open. It just gives it a lot more airflow in here and I'm gonna work for the next few hours or more so like five hours and we'll check in then. It's right about 3 p.m. and we're about to walk Coco. And then I think we're gonna head to our harvest host. We're staying at a farm tonight. And then after we go there, I think we're gonna go to Cuyahoga National Park and see a few sites there tonight. We have a little thermometer in the truck camper and it was 87 degrees in there at one point. I think it's like 73 degrees outside, but it's been parked in the same spot in the sun for like six or seven hours now. So we're at our harvest host. And this pole over here has electricity and there's a little fire pit and a picnic table over this way. There's some animals over here and there's some over here. And the guy just explained to us that he's actually building a house down this way. Kate is over near the truck still, but we're walking down the road. I think it's a big family place, so I just talked to another family member that lives there and now I'm checking out the little farm stand here, but I don't think it's fully set up yet, the guy said. I'm glad we stopped by and checked in and now we are headed to the national park and we're gonna stop at this thing called the Ledges Overlook First. So there's the first national park sign we've seen. There's the parking lot and here's a good map of the park and it's kind of narrow and we're more towards the southern end I know today we're also going to be stopping at Kendall Lake, which is right here. And we have to like walk across this field or something to get to the overlook. Right before we got out of the car, it said it was 82 degrees out. This is super pretty. I'm glad we're in the shade because Coco's still hot. 
and we looked it up on the map and the actual overlook of the ledges area is actually where we were up there and there was a decent view it wasn't that great but it was still pretty good here we are back at the ledge Coco, I don't remember what the last national park you've been to was. I think it was Shenandoah, actually, but she's also been to Great Smoky Mountains. I think that might be it, but I feel like there was another one. This would also be an awesome place to get a Starlink reception. There's nothing in the way. We do have Starlink, but we really didn't use it that often. We probably bought it like five or six months ago now, and we did have it registered and set up the first few months we had gotten it. But we only used it a handful of times so i think it's for the last three months we deactivated it so we're not paying for it per month but we do have it with us in case we need to reactivate it in case we don't have good service anywhere here now that it's no longer freezing temperatures we're using our sink again and we have it on a little pump with on a switch right here and it's just to a portable five gallon jerry can which sits out here this is the water line and this is the electrical plug and the pump is just in the bucket all i have to do is Press the switch and then turn on the faucet and it works really well. Well that was pretty and now we are going to stop at Kendall Lake. Because I think we'll be quick I'm doing the thing where you leave the key fob in the truck and take this little thing with you with the doors locked so Coco can be in there with the AC running. It doesn't look like it's that big of a lake. It looks like it's more of like a little swamp thing but maybe it's bigger than I think. This is really nice. This section over here is bigger than the one over here. This reminds me of when I camped at this pond in New York called Rossman Pond three summers ago with my friend Jesse. It was just like this. It wasn't too big and there was lily pads around the outside. Well, that was very pretty. Not the best pond I've seen, but since it's such a nice night, it was pretty nice. Coco is excited. Our next two stops are the Everett Covered Bridge and the Beaver Marsh area. I figured we had to get a picture of us in front of the park sign. Well, I think we got a good one together. Are you ready to go to the Covered Bridge? Yeah, I am. Now we're at the parking lot for the Covered Bridge and there's another truck camper. They have AC. You made it, Coco. There's some people down there. We decided to walk under the bridge and Coco is testing out the water. She must be pretty hot, honestly, because she doesn't really like walking in the water usually. Yeah. I think we're going to stop at one more place, the Beaver Marsh area, and then it's back to our Harvest Host Farm camp spot. It still looks pretty busy here. We saw the boardwalk from the drive-in and there's people having a picnic behind us. We think that this towpath we're walking on uh, runs the whole length of the park and is about 80 miles. We think we read that earlier, but we're not quite sure if that's right. We just had to do a few minutes of walking and now we're down to the boardwalk area. It's such a pretty night. We didn't really stay long enough to see any beavers, but it was a really nice spot. We're back at our harvest host now. And there are all these little sheep and goats. And Coco is kind of like nervous of them. Hi, but Coco keeps freaking out at them. It is cool how close we are to the animals. One of them's actually free and keeps walking up here. But then whenever I like walk towards it, it runs back away. That one right there. Hey, how's it going? Now it's following me. I don't know how to interact with it, to be honest. Hello. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it looks really young. I think I spooked it. If this is your first video of ours that you're watching, you wouldn't have known that when we bought this Scout Camper used, there was no sink or stove in it, and it came with a Cook Partner brand, very nice uh, portable stove. 
and we did like it because it was a very nice quality stove but it was just cumbersome and took up a lot of room to store inside and it was annoying to have to set up every time but it was nice on the occasions when we wanted to cook outside the truck camper so we kind of missed that we sold that and when we installed the sink and stove in the camper so tonight i'm going to be warming up the chicken outside i'm just using this little one burner msr stove thing with our little pan I like how portable this thing is, but I'm always afraid the pan is gonna fall off it. We're back inside now, and here is the finished product. We're having some bread with some spinach dip on it, some raspberries, a salad with chicken, and Coco wants some. Our dinner was good. We've just been hanging out in here. You can see Coco's on the couch too. I think it's almost 10 o'clock and tomorrow we still both have to work so i think we're going to work for the morning and then during the midday hours go do a couple more things and see a couple waterfalls in the park and then head towards west virginia so that's it for today and i'll see you in the morning good morning from the farm coco wanted to go out i think it's like 7 30 and here are the animals again good morning Hello. It's just sitting there watching us. We are now heading back to the National Park and first we're going to be stopping at this place called the Boston Mill Visitor Center. It looks like there's a car show today, which is funny. It's pretty cool. So that's where we're parked and the actual visitor center is this building over here and they do have wi-fi here and kate and coco just walked over to see if there was somewhere to sit closer to the building we just talked to those people in the airstream and they're also from new york and they're headed to moab for a month i'm behind the visitor center now on the bridge over the river and it's super pretty here. I think after we work for a little bit, we're gonna hike to one of the waterfalls uh, that starts from here, and it should be pretty. We did walk around the little parking lot for cars and coffee, and it wasn't very big, but there were a good amount of cool looking cars. Kate and Coco have been working over here. Looks like Coco's excited to see me. Hey, Coco. I'm gonna go check out the visitor center, and then you can take a turn going in. The little gift shop is behind me, but this is a really nice and new visitor center, it looks like. So we are over here more south, but it's kind of in the middle. It was pretty nice in there. I was hoping they would have a metal sign, but I ended up getting a sticker and a magnet. We're actually gonna drive to this other little national park store first and then go to Brandywine Falls. I thought the trailhead was walkable distance from the visitor center, but it's actually not. So that's about 10 minutes away anyways. We just drove to this little town called Peninsula that was only five minutes from the visitor center. And the main street over this way was really nice. And this is the store right here, Trail Mix. This is a nice shirt, yeah. Wild place. They do have a lot of stuff here. I did get one thing when I was in there. I got this wooden sign. They didn't have any metal ones because I like collecting those, but this looks pretty good. Continue on Brandywine Road for one and a half miles. We just got to the trailhead and it just started raining. So you can see we put on our raincoats. We think we're actually just gonna do the shorter walk to the overlook and not to the base of the falls. And we're gonna leave Coco here. So it should still be a good view, I think. But they've also got nice bathrooms here too and parking for campers. We're getting closer, I hear it. I think there's stairs over here to our right. But we should be able to see the falls right over this. Well, that's pretty good. There's a lot of water. The waterfall was very pretty. It stopped raining as hard as it was earlier, but we're still hearing thunder. And now I think we're either going to head towards West Virginia or check out another waterfall before we go. We just pulled into the lot and there's only one other car here and the trail is across the street. 
Bridal Veil Falls. I don't know why it doesn't say National Park. I don't know if we're still in the park or not. I think we are. This boardwalk area is pretty long and it's pretty nice. I'd say it looks relatively new. I think they're mostly right over here. It's not a lot of water here, but it is pretty. If there's more water, you could almost slide down it with a tube. I think we found the viewing platform. This was a neat little waterfall. I think this was the last thing on our list to visit in Cuyahoga National Park. We've got a four and a half hour drive to West Virginia and I will see you in the next video.